Hi, I'm Dr. Erica with Rosie Research, and today we are going to make some simple electronics projects with small LED lights. And these are our little light up critters. So join me as we create these together. To make this project, you're going to need a few items. A lot of them you can find pretty easily. We also have an Amazon link down below that will have a list of everything you need to make this project if you want to get it there. The first thing you need is the clothespins. This is sort of your animal body. And then you need a few circuit elements. You need a battery that's going to power your circuit. So this gives the electrons the push to go through things. You need an LED that's going to light up in your circuit. You need copper tape. This acts as our wires in the circuit. So it kind of makes it a little simpler for kids. They can tape down things. And then the last thing that we need is what I call conducting paint. Now, you can buy conducting paint online pretty easily. That stuff ha always gives me a migraine when I smell it. I'm not going to lie. It smells really bad. So what I have done is I've made my own conducting paint, and there's another video that will tell you how to make it. But it's pretty simple. You're basically mixing Elmer's glue and pencil lead together. And pencil lead is super conducting, so this is essentially me drawing really hard on these little guys. So let's start making it. The first thing that you're going to need is your little clothespin. And what I like to do is I like to draw a little dot on it where I'm going to put my LED, which what side is the LED going to be? Because that's really important. We have two kind of things to wire up, and they're going to be a little bit different on each side. So this is where I'm going to put my LED on the top. So I have the bottom and I have the top. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take a little piece of this copper tape probably about yay long, and I'm going to peel it and put it right down. I do want to make a note before we go any further about the copper tape. If you are going to take your copper tape, it's not super sticky, so when you peel it, you want to sort of peel it like this, like a T, and then paste it straight down and go from there. You don't want to peel it all the way off because it's going to get all curly, and then you've got to like figure out how to get it undone, and then it's not sticky, and it doesn't work very well. So when you use your copper tape, you want to start it, and then put it down and then continue to undo the backing from it from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from the front. Again, my top is on the top side right now. So this is where I'm going to put my LED. We're going to go from the top of that back to this little spring wire that is part of it. And that spring wire is really important. You need a clothespin with the spring wire. I don't want to go just straight across the spring wire. That's not going to make very good contact with that wire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my nail, or if you want, you could use a little knife. I'm going to try to pick up this little spring, and I'm going to try to push that wire in there, okay, that copper tape. I'm going to try to push it down in there. The better connection I get here, the better job I'm going to get in terms of having my LED be really, really bright. And you can rip off any excess that you have and just toss it aside. All right, so I've got one side of tape, that's the top, and it looks like this. It's just a little tiny piece like that. The bottom side is going to go again from the spring towards the front, and it's going to go onto this bottom jaw. So you need a little bit longer piece of tape for that. So let's get a piece of tape. Always better to use a little too long and then cut it later than to have to use multiple pieces of tape. So again, we'll start peeling it just a little bit, and then I'm going to peel a little bit more because i got to get it all the way inside that mouth. So it's going to go on the bottom jaw, just like this. And then once I have it in, I can actually clip it down, and I'm going to go around the back. And again, I'm going to go onto the spring. And again, I'm going to try to lift up that spring and get it really in there as good as I can get it in there. So you don't have to necessarily take the spring off because it's really hard to put the spring back on if you do that. But I just want to get a really good connection in there. And I see, oops, I actually cut my tape a little too short, but that's okay. That's what we're going to use our conducting paint for. So the next piece is adding some conducting paint. And if you have the other type of conducting paint, you're just going to add little tiny bits, the same places that we add this conducting paint. So I'll take a paintbrush, and I'm just going to kind of connect the copper wire and that metal spring. 
So I'm just going to connect right here. And it's really thick and goopy. But we can get it to go. Just like that. And you want a nice and good connection there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just like this. I really want to get that connection good. All right. Now I can set this aside to let it dry for a little bit. And I'll set my conducting paint on the side too. I might need it later, sort of depends on what happens. The next step is trying to figure out what kind of LED you want. So here we've got just a plain blue LED. You can get rainbow LEDs. I have a bunch. We run a lot of community classes, so I buy my LEDs by the thousands. But you can get them on Amazon in sets of 20. I really like this kit, which has all different colors and sizes. Um, but what that kit doesn't have is this type of LED, which is what I, I love these. It's a rainbow LED. You know, it adds a little dynamic movement to your animal and... Kids get really excited about it changing colors and everything, all of the circuitry to change the colors is inside the LED. So you don't have to do anything extra. It's kind of nice. All right, so one really important thing to do is to make sure your LED and your battery work, which means do just what I'm doing, pinch it between it. Now, if you're at home and it's not working, there's maybe your LED is wrong, maybe your battery is wrong, but I can also do that with the same LED. And the way that I changed it is I just flipped it over. Okay, so I want one LED leg on each side of the battery. And LEDs are like slides or one-way streets. You go down the slide, you can't go up the slide. Electrons are really, really good rule followers. So they are not gonna go up the slide. If you put all of those electrons at the bottom of the slide, nothing happens. If you put them at the top of the slide, they're going to go have a party and light up as they go down that slide. All right. And if you're wondering, there's two legs on your LED. One is short and one is long. That long LED goes to the top of the battery, the part of the battery with the writing and the plus sign. So once you've gotten that working, that's perfect. You know what we, we know what we're going to do. So now what I want to do is I'm going to pick this guy back up. I want the short leg of my LED to go into the mouth. All right, so I'm, I have that dot that I did before. And I'm going to put the short leg of the LED into the mouth. And I'm going to bend it around like this so that it can just close straight like that. All right, nothing's happening. And that's because I don't have my battery. I'm going to slip my battery in under that long leg with the writing part up. So just like this. And you'll notice that once I get the battery in, it lights up for me. Now it's not a crazy bright light. Sometimes that happens and it's part of your circuit. So you can go through your circuit with pieces of conducting paint and see, you know, if there's any little joints on the springs or if you used two pieces of tape in one spot, you're going to want to paint over that. Once you have it lit up and working, we need to make it so that you can actually play with this. Because if I open this right now, everything is going to fall off. So what I do is I flip it over and I'm going to glue the bottom part right here of the battery. I don't want to take the battery off and put glue on the clothes pin because right now the bottom of the battery is touching this copper tape and that copper tape completes my circuit. So if I put glue right there, my circuit's not gonna work. So I'm gonna put glue just on the edges. So I flip it over and I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue right on each side just to sort of hold it in there. And then right now there's nothing that's holding my LED on. So I'm gonna add glue sort of right here at the nose of the LED so that it will also stay on whether or not my circuit is open or closed. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of glue around right there. There we go. All right, now this is pretty good to go. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna actually just tape down this leg. And I have found 
it works really well if I actually add a little bit more conducting paint and then tape over the conducting paint. So I'm going to add just a little bit, not too much. You don't want a ton of conducting paint, but I'm just going to add a little bit on the top of the battery here. So it'll help connect it, get a really good connection like that. And then I'm going to go on the, get another piece of tape. And I'm going to go right across that paint. Now when you put this tape on, you don't want to have it so long that it's going to wrap around the underside of the battery because that will cause what we say a short circuit. It will connect the top of the battery to the bottom of the battery through one piece of copper tape. And all the electrons are going to choose to take the easiest route possible. They are super lazy. So they are not going to choose to go through the LED and through this copper tape and through the spring and up to the bottom. They're going to choose to go straight through the copper tape if it connects the top and the bottom of that battery. So if you had it working and you put the copper tape on and all of a sudden it's not working, it's probably because you short circuited it and that you're going to need to make sure that it's not touching the bottom. So I'm going to peel one last piece of copper tape here. And this is still kind of wet, but I think it'll be fine. Um, we are just going to go up the leg and then all the way down. So it's going to also hit the copper tape is going to hit not only the conducting paint, but also the battery. So there we go for that. And I have this extra copper tape. Again, I do not want to wrap it around. I want to make sure that I cut it off so that I can't get to the bottom side of that. And then I can press it down. And you'll notice it's already lighting up a little bit better. There we go. So now we have a little guy that lights up. If it's not lighting up the first time, one thing that could be happening is if your clothespin is sort of off. I don't know if I can get it far enough off here. But if your LED, if the bottom of the LED is not touching that clothespin piece, it's not going to light up. So you got to make sure that the leg of the LED is touching this bottom jaw of the wire. All right. So now I have this nice little working guy and it's fun. It can do a lot of things, but it's always more fun if you have some decorations. So I have pipe cleaners and googly eyes because who doesn't love a good set of googly eyes? And it is the holidays for us right now when we're taping this video. So I'm going to make this into a reindeer. So I'm going to make some little antlers. And nothing too special, but you, this is where you can spend a ton of time with your kids and the glue gun and really making monsters that they are going to love that they can't wait to go take around the house and run experiments with. So sort of up to you guys what you want to make into yours. I've made crocodiles. We've made, this is my little like, I don't know, crazy funny bird. I'm not really sure if that's a bird. I don't know what that is, but we're going to call it a bird. All right, so here are some little um, antlers. Maybe they're a little big, but that's okay. You do want to make sure if you use pipe cleaners, pipe cleaners have metal that runs through them. So you don't want to put the pipe cleaners down here and then connect it to the top of the battery because, again, the electrons are going to say, oh, I can go straight from the bottom to the top. That's super easy. I'm not going to do anything extra. So just keep that in mind when you are making it. Maybe I'll shorten my antlers by doing this. Like that. So you want to make sure, I'm going to just glue it straight on top of the battery, so I'm going to make sure that they don't touch the bottom of the battery, because again, they are conductors, they're metal. But I can add that like this, and maybe spread them out some. And I'm going to put some googly eyes on. So I will glue for each googly eye. I really don't think you can go wrong with googly eyes. Just sort of set it in there. And then I have a fun little reindeer, or whatever you want to make, doesn't matter, that you can play with. Now, when the circuit is an open circuit, so remember we talked about how there's going to be a switch in here, the switch is you just opening your circuit, okay? 
This is great because when you use a light switch, you don't actually get to see how that switch is opening or closing the circuit. Here you do, you see exactly what's happening. My LED is no longer connected to the bottom, the electrons can't go anywhere, nothing is happening. Once I can flow through, then I have this light. And a nice thing that you can do, fun, some fun experiments you can do after you've done all of the circuit making and all of the art projects, you can take them around the house and look for conductors and insulators. So conductors are typically metals, but they allow electrons to pass through them very easily. So electrons, it's like a big highway, and they can just run through there. And the way that you know if something is a conductor is you have your little animal eat it. So if I eat here a zipper, it still lights up, which means my circuit is complete. So the electrons are now going from the top of the battery, sliding down the LED, going into the zipper, through the zipper this way, then going around here and into the spring and then onto the bottom of the battery. So that's how my whole circuit goes. Because the zipper is a metal and because it's a conductor, it lights up. If I choose something like plastic, plastic is not a conductor. It's called an insulator. It's really hard for electrons to move through that. I could probably get through this plastic. Everything at some point, if you apply enough of a battery power, enough of a voltage, you can get through it. But here, it's an insulator. These are pretty good insulators. Your little nose doesn't light up. All right, and if you are following us and you're doing some of our projects, some of our labs online, you will have done or maybe are planning on doing our squishy circuits lab where you make circuits out of Play-Doh. And one thing that I love when I tell people about squishy circuits is Play-Doh is not conducting. How do you make a circuit out of Play-Doh? And so you can test that. Um, if we test it in this one, you'll notice the light still goes on. It's really dim though. Right? Because it's a resistor, it resists the electrons, but the electrons can still get through it. And so you'll see it still lights up just a little bit, um, but it is a conductor. And so that's a great sort of thing to ask your kids, like, oh, we made these circuits with Play-Doh. Do you think it's a conductor or an insulator or somewhere in between? Because resistors are certainly in between. And this is, is a resistor, but it does still conduct. So it's a great project. Once they have this, they can run around the house. You can use it in the dark, which is a lot of fun. You can run these little science experiments. You've done some art, you've done some science. So mom and dad, you guys can feel great about your sort of family time. One last note is you do need to make something for them to eat because if I just leave them like this, they'll probably run out of battery in about three or four days. If you make something for them to eat, which needs to be an insulator, you can put it in their mouth and it won't be on anymore and you can go about your day and bring out your fun little animals from their backpacks or from their schoolwork whenever they want to and they'll still work. So this was our sort of simple electronics project that we love doing because it really blends science and art together. We have lots of other things um, coming up in videos, so make sure that you follow us and subscribe so you can see all of our projects as we come out. And I am so excited to have you with us with this project, and we hope to see you again soon.